Edinburgh's Royal Mile runs between the castle and the palace of Holyrood House, following for much of the way the course of what was once a rocky volcanic ridge. Its length is approximately a Scots mile, a measurement that is no longer used and which was longer than an English mile. It is made up of a number of streets. Starting at the castle, it first passes downhill into Castle Hill, then Lawn Market. From George IV Bridge, it follows the High Street until the site of the old town wall at St Mary's Street, where it follows Canongate, then Abbey Strand by the palace. In a map dating to the mid-17th century, you can see how crowded the town was within the town walls, and how the big houses outside that wall had the luxury of space and gardens. The town wall would have afforded some protection to those living inside, but I imagine if you were an army intent on taking Edinburgh and its castle, you probably wouldn't pay a great deal of attention to those nice big houses outside the wall. Nevertheless, for many, living within the town walls was a safe, if not overcrowded, place to be. Hello there. Well, welcome to the fourth video in the series Old Photos of Scotland. Today we're in Edinburgh and we're going to be working our way down the Royal Mile from here, the castle, all the way down to the bottom and the palace of Holyrood House. I think sometimes in these old photographs it is invariably the people in the photographs that make the image quite memorable and I have located some absolutely cracking old photos so um, stay tuned right to the end because I've got an absolutely beauty uh, that was taken in Abbey Strand just by the palace so sit back and relax and enjoy what follows Well, we're starting right here on the castle's esplanade. This photo was taken by George Washington Wilson sometime before the entrance to the castle was altered in the 1880s. If we zoom in on the old gatehouse, we can see a soldier, part of the castle's garrison. Still on the esplanade, and a very early photo taken from the castle looking down Castle Hill and the start of the Royal Mile around 1846. In addition to the spire of what is now Tolbooth Kirk and a faded St Giles Cathedral way in the distance, you can see what today is called Cannonball House sitting on the top right of Castle Hill. Looking down Castle Hill from the Castle Esplanade, sometime between 1900 and 1930. On the right is the building called Cannonball House, and if you look closely, you can actually see the cannonball embedded in the gable end. It is thought the ball was placed there as some sort of marker long ago, and not fired from a cannon. Thank you. 
another early photograph looking down Lawn Market. It dates to 1875 and shows an architectural layout that looks quite similar today, with the exception of that lovely big old jumbly building on the right, which has sadly gone. The Gothic arch on the left, part of the rear of the Church of Scotland's Assembly Hall, can still be seen today. The north side of Lawn Market in 1856. Today, the view is much the same, with some building losses and some still standing, most notably the tall one on the far left, which is Gladstone's Land, a 17th century tenement which is open to the public and a real insight into life in old Edinburgh. If we zoom in, we can see a little more detail with washing hanging out of windows and a variety of shops. A view of the Mercat Cross and the city chambers around 1930. If we zoom in, we can see some very plush motors. A man in a bonnet engaged in some lounging against a wall. And a policeman pointing at something or maybe giving directions. The Mercat Cross was largely rebuilt and moved a few metres to its current location in 1885. It is often the people captured in these old photographs that make the image memorable, and this is a perfect example. It shows numbers 70 to 74 High Street around 1930, and a section of the Royal Mile that has been demolished and replaced by a modern castle building that is a hotel at the corner of Nidri Street. But just look at that wee boy. Not sure how old he is. He's dressed like a man and well dressed, but I suspect he's in his mid teens. And would you check out that expression? That is a boy with attitude. I wonder what became of him. The name Kant's Close, seen on the left in the photograph, has been retained in the more recent building that now occupies the site. Way back in the mists of time now, with this photograph of part of the High Street, including John Knox House, in 1846. The three main buildings shown on the left would all appear to have survived, and while today John Knox House is open to the public, there is some doubt as to whether John Knox ever actually lived there. A much sharper image of the same part of the High Street, this time dating to 1880. The detail in some of these old photos is amazing. You can see the stone well in the foreground that is still there today, along with an interesting collection of shops and coffee houses. When I first saw this image and the rooftop advert for Knox's Coffee House and Lodgings, I wondered who was meant to see it. It seemed an advert that was only visible from a helicopter. But in fact, it was probably visible to folk coming down the more elevated sections of the High Street. John Knox House has been open to the public as a museum since 1853. And in the following images, we are treated to a look inside this museum around 1900.
Looking down the Cannon Gate, probably sometime in the late 19th century, and the scene is so quiet and free of traffic that there's a man standing in the middle of the road. He looks like he's examining his mobile phone, but of course they didn't have mobile phones in the old days. On the right, the two pointed columns mark the entrance to Murray House, one of those big old houses with fine gardens. On the left, we can see one of those strange retail combinations of the old days. A shop selling both fruit and sweeties. We can also see the clock and grand fairy tale pepper pot turrets of the 16th century Tolbooth. An almost identical view of the Cannon Gate, taken around 1900 but it looks busier than the last photo. Maybe it's wash day or something, but there's an awful lot of washing hanging out of windows. In addition to more people milling around, we can see the mortar and pestle shop sign of a chemist or druggist on the far left. A slightly closer and more detailed image of this part of Cannon Gate. It dates to 1907 and there's a lot of stuff going on there. Number 173 is quite interesting. It's selling beer and refreshments, but I don't think it's a pub, as there are adverts for fries, chocolate and cocoa. The old Tollbooth Bar, now the Tollbooth Tavern, behind the street sweeper is still there, but the beer and refreshments building and everything on its left has gone. Same part of the Cannon Gate, but from a different angle, around the early to mid 1880s. This photo shows the 16th century Cannon Gate Borough Cross on the far right, with a young woman sitting on its base. This cross seems to have been moved about over the centuries. It apparently once sat in the middle of the road. It was then shifted in 1737 off the road and up against the tall booth wall, as you can see here. And sometime not long after this photo was taken, it was moved again. Oh, it's a hard life being a borough cross, to the west of the entrance to the nearby church. But it has since been moved yet again, in 1953, to its current location inside the church grounds, to the east of the entrance. We're remaining in this part of Cannon Gate, but looking at the other side of the road and the building that is now Huntley House Museum of Edinburgh. The photo dates to around 1880 and shows what at one time was another of those big grand old houses. Clearly, at the date of the photo, it was no longer a big house and had been divided up into smaller dwellings and shops. If we zoom in a bit, we can see a young man with what looks like a bellboy hat looking at some sort of notice board on the wall on the far left of the image. 
Did he work in a hotel in the new town? Or was he a drummer in the military? Any thoughts? Today, the inside of the museum provides a fascinating insight into old Edinburgh and a real feel of the haphazard architectural nature of 16th century townhouses. Near the site of another of Edinburgh's ancient crosses, the Girth Cross, down by the small roundabout at the foot of Canongate, by the current Scottish Parliament. The photo dates to some time between 1900 and 1930 and gives us a view of Abbey Strand, the last bit of the Royal Mile by the Palace of Holyrood House. If we zoom in, you can see that that thing that looks like some sort of cross isn't the Girth Cross and is in fact probably related to the gentleman's lavatory perhaps providing a little ventilation in the urinal below ground level. This area of Edinburgh, in particular around nearby Abbey Hill, has changed beyond all recognition, but the small section of the buildings in Abbey Strand, seen here, are still standing. And here we have a pub and a sweetie shop in those same Abbey Strand buildings, along with two hopeful small boys. It dates to around 1890 and is an absolutely cracking photo. We can see that inside that pub they have Lord Darnley's waistcoat and that they sold Truman's famous London stout. Probably the best photo in the whole bunch. It shows the end of that row of buildings in Abbey Strand, nearest the palace, taken around 1900. There's just so much going on there. Look at those adverts! But probably most interesting of all is the woman hanging out of the window. She wears an expression that I can't quite read but it gives a tremendous glimpse of clothing of the period. Recent work carried out to renovate and restore this old row of buildings has been monumental in its undertaking. And what we now have today is an awesome structural reminder of just why Edinburgh is now a World Heritage Site. I'm Eddie Burns. Bye for now.